Today we're going to look at the source of that. How, how is it that we get to the place where we address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? Well, the portion of our text we're going to read today will tell us that. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. As you're turning there, I'll tell you we had our family Christmas time yesterday. Uh, had almost everybody there. It's good to have... Joanna and Clifton and their children in with us for a few days from Fort Pope. Clifton, great to have you back behind the drums. Josiah does an admirable job, by the way. You need to know that. But it's good to have you and him. It's good to see Josiah on the cajon and giving us something of a stereophonic uh, percussion effect. Had a great time yesterday. Uh, through the years, Karen and I have learned that rather than get into the appearance of competition, fighting for children and in-laws to be with us on Christmas and Thanksgiving, uh, that when it comes to Christmas, we will do our, our family time a week or so before that, and that frees everybody up. If the children want to have their own Christmas celebration in their own home, they're free to do that. If they want to spend Christmas well, with, uh, with the other side of the of the mix and the family they're free to do that as well and we had a wonderful time yesterday good gospel exhortations grandchildren reading scripture to our family and a great time of, of sharing together uh, it is the season of giving and receiving gifts because we have been given the greatest gift in jesus christ ephesians chapter 5 Verses 15 to 21 is what we're reading through every week, this wishing you and yours a Spirit-filled Christmas. Today we're going to focus in on, uh, on the second part of verse 19, uh, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Stand with me if you would and follow along as I read Ephesians 5, 15 to 21. If you don't have your Bibles, we'll have the text on the screen for you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. What have we just read together? We've read the inerrant, infallible, all-sufficient Word of God. My prayer today is that we will make a connection, perhaps like we have not before, or at least haven't in a long time, that if you have indeed been saved by grace through faith, if you've experienced the regeneration that comes by the Spirit in the new covenant. You've been given a new heart. Not, the stony heart's gone. The fleshy heart, the heart that beats with tenderness for God is there. And that new heart promotes within you the desire to praise your God because He and He alone is worthy to be praised. Thank you. Please be seated. If you've been with us since December the 1st, you know that we looked initially in this passage at walking wise in evil times. Uh, last week, we looked at singing to one another. Uh, this week, singing to the Lord. Next week, Lord willing, always giving thanks. And then December the 29th, wrapping up the month of December, uh, submitting to one another. You'll remember that the bigger picture that we're studying through right now is one anothering living in a gospel community. And so I think it's significant that this passage opens up with addressing one another and closes with submitting to one another. We have a couple of one another's before us in this study. One writer has said, in this portion of verse 19, here the singing is not to one another, but to the Lord. Lord. 
The Greek of this speaks of doing this in your heart. We read Colossians 3.16 last week. I want to call your attention to that again. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. You see how the heart is engaged? I love the sound, by the way. I've told people through the years. I'm not bothered by the sound of infants among us. You know what that sound is? That's a future. That's a future. Rejoice. This writer goes on to say, referring to either the sincerity or the inwardness of authentic Christian praise or both. Another writer caught the point with this. Making music in your heart's for the ears of the Lord. See, when we sing, while that is right that we are teaching and admonishing one another in our singing, we are singing for the ears of the Lord. The Scripture teaches the Lord inhabits the praise of His people. If His people are not praising Him, what will He inhabit? You're singing here today that we're going we're gonna to engage in lab in just a few minutes. We're going to sing for about half an hour or so. Joshua's prepared that for us promotes, cultivates an environment for the Lord to come and inhabit. If His people will not praise Him, why would He have an interest in inhabiting in the midst of His people? If His people do not find Him praiseworthy, why would He come to bless His people? And so we're taught something here today we're going to look at. This writer goes on to say that the use of the language, we're going to see this, is an instruction from which unmusical people unable to sing in tune have always derived much comfort. You're singing for the ears of the Lord. In this case, it may be silent worship, although at the same time inwardly joyful and melodious may be happening in your heart. There are times when you've experienced that, I'm sure. Full of the joy of the Lord and just singing in your heart to Him. Without doubt, Spirit-filled Christians have a song of joy in their hearts. And Spirit-filled public worship is a joyful celebration of God's mighty acts. Is that how you've come today? Is that why you've come today? Has the Lord been good to you this past week? Have you experienced His mercies this week? I want to see three things real quickly from this passage. Number one, the focus of the voice in worship. Number two, the focus of the musical instruments in worship. And number three, the spiritual source of worship. Let's look at these. The focus of the voice in worship. Singing, verse 19b, and making melody to the Lord. To the Lord. Now look, I wouldn't expect a person who hadn't been saved to sing to the Lord. Doesn't mean they can't. They have a voice. They can hear tunes. they rational creatures made in the image of God and certainly unconverted people can sing. Can sing about the Lord. Can even sing to the Lord. In fact, angels incessantly praise the Lord, and they have never been, nor will they ever be, converted. For all that the angels know of our great God, beholding Him day and night, crying, Holy, 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 they will never personally experience His grace shown to sinful creatures made in His image. They will never be gripped by what Jesus Christ has done, shedding His own blood, bearing in His body our sin on the tree, hanging there satisfying God's divine justice by suffering and dying in our place, rising three days later to prove, infallibly prove, that everything He said He was, everything He said He would do, He indeed is and did. Angels can observe that. 
in awe and wonder. In fact, the Scripture tells us they stand on tiptoe in heaven, gazing into the mystery that is the church. But they will never personally experience that. And yet they sing. They sing. And those of us who have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, those who have come at a point in your life to genuinely face the specter of your sin, how your sin makes you deserving of eternal hell and separation from God. And yet how Jesus came in the fullness of time, perfectly kept the whole law, the law that you and I began to break as soon as we had the opportunity to do so. He perfectly kept it. He qualified Himself to be our substitute. And when you've come to see that, that you, if you get what you deserve, and we're in the season of the year where people are heightened in their awareness of what they think they deserve for Christmas. But when you see what you really deserve, that if I were to get what I deserve, if you were to get what you deserve, you would get hell for eternity. And yet you realize that God does not relate exclusively to creatures made in His image on the basis of what we deserve. He relates to those who will repent of their sin and commit their lives to Jesus Christ on the basis of what He is willing to give to show mercy and grace. Jesus took what you and I deserve. And when you see that, when you've come to the reality of your sinfulness, Jesus' righteousness, God's holiness, and the willingness of the Blessed Trinity to impute the righteousness of Jesus Christ onto us so that God will view us as if we had never sinned. What can you do but thank Him? What can you do? What is the only fitting response to that? All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. What can I do but thank Him? What can I do but give my life to Him? Oh, people who observe salvation, watch it, hear about it, can be complacent about it. They can be dismissive about it. Oh, that's nice for you. But people who have experienced salvation, who are being transformed from the inside out, cannot help but praise Him. Peter and John were arrested, threatened. Do not speak in this name again or you'll find yourselves back here and it will be worse for you. What was their answer? Their answer is the only fitting answer of blood-bought followers of Jesus Christ. We cannot help but speak that which we've seen and heard. In the same way, blood-bought Followers of Christ today cannot help but sing His praise. Now, I know I'm speaking to some people who say, but pastor, I just don't sing. And I'm going to tell you something. Somebody has done something to you through the years. Maybe they have dismissed this idea. Maybe someone made fun of you. Something has happened. Because see, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're operating contrary to your nature because someone has imposed upon you restrictions that are ungodly, that are antithetical to the Christian life. Where do we stop? Well, I don't witness because someone told me I didn't witness well. I don't pray because someone made fun of the way I pray. You see, when we start playing that game, the devil is in control. And we need to break that control because, you see, Jesus' death and resurrection broke the power of the chains that bind us. My chains are gone. My heart is free. So we sing to the Lord. It's to the Lord. He is our focus. When I preach, I pray that, that you will be benefited by what I'm sharing with you from the Word, the exegesis of these passages. I pray that that's the case. 
Pray that I will not be dull and boring. But folks, make no mistake about it. I preach for an audience of one. If I hear well done from above, then that's enough. And when you sing, while you are speaking to one another and teaching one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, there's a sense in which you are singing for an audience of one. And if heaven smiles upon your willingness to engage, praising the Lord, singing to the Lord, then that is enough. In fact, I would go so far as to say, if you'd be bold enough, if everyone around you cringes when you sing, heaven smiles. And that is enough. And yet you know it's not the case. Out of the mouths of lisping babes, He has ordained praise. And we love to hear it. Whether it's in key or off key, we love to hear it. Second thing I want you to see is the focus of the musical instruments in worship. This, this singing and making melody, the, the, the term making melody is a reference to, to instrumental expression instruments should be used you read through the psalms uh, praise the lord with uh, with the timbrel praise the lord with the cymbal praise the lord with the stringed instrument praise the lord with the trumpet there's all these all these instruments are brought to bear now the good news is you don't have to have all of those to praise him you can praise him with your voice a cappella without accompaniment but the scripture encourages bringing the instruments to bear so we like that. We like it when our, when our musicians make melody. And they do, by the way. They do. You don't know some things that I know about, about the, uh, what goes on behind the scenes for our musicians to get ready to lead us. We could do it a cappella. Some denominations do. And that's beautiful in and of itself. And there are times when it's right to do that. But this scripture here says... Singing to the Lord, making melody to the Lord. Someone said, I read the other day, they said, well, I, just, I don't like the worship. And the response was, that's okay. We're not worshiping you. We're worshiping the Lord. And he likes it. He likes it. We're following the scripture. Read the Psalms. Read Psalm 150 sometime. See what the Lord calls his people to do. And so there is this focus, the focus of the voice to the Lord, the focus of the musical instruments to the Lord. And at that point, we can make a decision to join in or contradict the very new nature we've been given by not joining in. It's your decision. But it's not a decision made toward me. It's a decision made toward God who inhabits the praise of His people. The third thing I want you to see is the spiritual source of worship. Doing this with your heart. One of the accusations God gives in the days of Isaiah, as He has Isaiah the prophet say, these people worship Me with their lips, but their hearts are far from Me. He finds that hypocritical. It's not enough. Isn't it enough? No, it's not enough. From your heart. And again, I would say, if your heart has not been changed by God's grace, I have no expectation that you would sing. In fact, what I pray for you is that as you stand there hearing others around you sing, begin to have dealings with God. God, why is my heart so dull to this? Lord, why am I so indifferent? Or why am I obstinate? What is it that holds me back? Lord, whatever you've done in their hearts, do in my heart. Change my heart. Come in and, and, and work from the inside out. Do that work of the Spirit in me so that out of my mouth will come the words of life. Sing them over and over, the wonderful words of life. Jesus said in John's Gospel that when the Spirit comes, that out of the, the very centermost part of your being will flow rivers of living water. Let me ask you, are you conducting yourself in worship today in such a way that, that life-giving water flows from you to others around you? John Stott makes the observation in his book, Our Guilty Silence, that, that how we worship 
both privately in our private devotions, family times, and then corporately as the body of Christ. How we worship influences how we witness during the week. We don't have a witness. We're not willing to bear witness. It says something about our worship. But he says it's a cycle. Because when we do witness, when we do witness, you know what happens? When you share the gospel, you cannot speak to others about what the Lord has done to you without having been filled up in your heart and life again what He has done to you and be called to praise Him. To praise Him. Tell the story of Jesus' wonderful works, His birth, His life, His death, His resurrection. And see what that does to stir your heart to stop and praise Him. When He was born, the angels praised Him. When He was born, the Magi worshipped Him and adored Him. When He was born, the shepherds were amazed by Him and worshipped Him. When He was born, Anna praised God when she encountered Him. When He was born, Simeon praised God. Nunc Dimittis, now Lord, let Your servant depart. Oh, Lord, I can die now. You've let me see your salvation. You see? You can't encounter Jesus and not be brought to praise. You can't speak of Him to others and not be brought to praise, even if they utterly reject Him. They say, I want nothing to do with your God. The fact that you're telling others about Him will stir up in you praise to God. Singing making melody to the Lord with your heart. That's where it starts. How's your heart today? How's your heart today? Has your heart been hurt? Been wounded? Oh, let me give you the balm of Gilead. Let me give you the salve. Let me give you the healing ointment. The good news that there is a God who loves you and showed His love to you in infallible ways by sending Jesus to die for you to rise again. How's your heart? Has it grown cold? Indifferent to the neglect of the means of grace? Let me encourage you in just a moment here to use one of those means of grace designed to warm and strengthen and nurture your heart. And that is praising the God who gives the new heart. How's your heart today? Is it the stony heart still? Well, while we sing and praise our God, your voice may join us. But oh, what I hope is happening inside of you is that you're crying out to God, Dear God, take away this stony heart and give me a new heart that beats for you. Sing to the Lord. Psalm 40, verse 3 says it this way, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in God. The Scripture ties that to your willingness to sing the new song that He's put in your heart by grace. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, You're the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we bow before You in Jesus' name. Oh, we're thankful for the new birth. We're thankful for a Savior who saves. We're thankful for the Spirit who, re who transforms us, gives us the new birth, and with that, the new heart. Oh, Lord. For whatever reason, our tongues get tied. For whatever reason, we're resistant. Oh Lord, today, by Your Spirit, loose our tongues and give to Your people a heart to praise You like never before and come and inhabit the praise of Your people. May we express without hesitation the new song that You have put in our heart by grace through faith. But we ask this in Jesus' name, for His sake. Amen.